Hi everyone, this is Jeff Morrow with Sierra Analytics, and I'm here with another featured feature for HD Examiner. Today's featured feature is the volcano plot, what it does and uh, why it's useful. So the volcano plot is a new feature in HD Examiner version 2.2. Uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, there's a video linked in the description below uh, that talks all about the new features in HD Examiner 2.2, so check that one out as well. The volcano plot takes advantage of replicate HDX data to do more rigorous statistical significance testing on your data. So to use the volcano plot, you need any HD Examiner project that has technical replicates. So here we have some data. Uh, it's already been calculated and we have triplicates at each of our time points. So we can look at the data, we can look at the uptake plots if we like, and now we can also go uh, to the peptide pool here. We can select our two states, the mutant and the wild type for, for this project, and the butterfly plot you've probably seen before in HD Examiner, but now under this menu, we have a new thing called the volcano plot. So if you select that, you see a plot that looks like this. So what are we looking at here? Um, each of these points on the volcano plot represents one peptide at one time point. So for example, this point here that I'm mousing over is uh, the peptide 188-206 at the 30 minute time point. And in fact, if I click on that, it takes me to its, uh, to its uptake plot as well. So that's a handy little feature. Uh, what are the X and Y axes here? Well, so the X axis is delta number D uh, for this peptide at this time point between the mutant and wild type states. So this peptide, for example, we're looking at uh, 226 to 235 at the four hour time point. And we can see that the delta number D is 2.121. Uh, so it's a pretty big difference. The y-axis here is the negative log of the p-value uh, that, that you got by looking at the, uh, the replicate data. So this difference uh, here has a p-value of 5.863 times 10 to the minus 7. So it's a pretty low p-value, so that's probably probably a good point, but uh, we'll, we'll, I'll explain what the rest of this is in a minute. So negative log p actually is, is important here because by taking the log, we're actually spreading out the values and not bunching them all you know, on, on one end or the other of the graph. And by taking the negative of it, we make sure that the, the low value points, so the good p-values, are actually higher up on the graph, and the lower uh, things that are lower on this y-axis are the ones that we don't want because their p-value is is too high. So that leaves these red lines. Well, what do what do these red lines mean? Well, this horizontal one across the bottom is easy. This is the cutoff p-value for a ninety-five percent. Uh, uh, confidence level. And in fact, if we go into the options under statistics, you can set this to 95 or 99%. So if you set it to 99, uh, it redraws the uh, volcano plot. And now the, uh, the, the, this horizontal line is at, is at two because, uh, the 99% confidence level represents a P value of, of 10 to the minus two or lower. So let's put that back for a moment to where it was before. Um, so anything below this red line, we know is not statistically significant because its p-value is too high. Now that leaves these horizontal, uh, sorry, these vertical red lines creating an alley here in the middle. So this right here is why, was one of the reasons why you need to have technical replicates to make this feature work because the way these uh, red lines are calculated is by going through all of your replicates and figuring out the, the replicate variance across all of your data. So what this means is that at a, at a delta number D of about, uh, it looks like about plus or minus 0.5 or thereabouts, um, 
we are still within the replicate noise, and therefore we can't be super sure about the statistical significance of these points in the middle here. So the points below this horizontal red line are the ones that we can reject because their p-value is too high. The points in between these two uh, vertical red lines in this alley in the middle are the points where even though their p-value might be small, the difference that we're measuring from these points is so small that we can't be sure that it isn't just noise because our replicate data tells us that this, you know, uh, these points here could actually be within the noise despite the fact that their p-value is is low. So what we're doing here in the volcano plot is we're essentially taking every measurement that we've done uh, on, a, on a peptide at a time point and we're subjecting it to two different significance tests. Uh, sorry, two, two different significance tests. The first being the p-value test. Is the p-value low enough? And the second being, is the difference bigger than the replicate variance that we've measured across all of our data? And so any point that's in this quadrant or this quadrant here are the ones that we can be pretty sure are, are statistically significant differences. So for example, this one here, uh, the delta number D is quite big. It's, it's more than three. And the p-value is very low. It's, it's on the order of 10 to the minus 8. So this one we can be pretty sure is, is a statistically significant difference. And in fact, if we click on it, we can see that, in fact, all four time points for this peptide show a statistically significant difference. So that's the volcano plot. Uh, we hope you'll find it useful. If you have any questions, please contact us. And once again, this is Jeff Morrow from Sierra Analytics. Thanks for watching.